Chuck Pearson, 78, of Berrien Springs, died August 24, 2021, trusting Jesus as Savior and Lord. Thank you for coming this morning to provide your support and encouragement to this family in their grief. It's, it's great to see the sanctuary filled uh, to honor the life of Chuck and more importantly from his perspective to be able to receive a testimony of what God did in and through his life and to be able to, to lift our hearts to praise God, his creator God, his redeemer God, his sustainer and provider God. And so thank you for coming this morning. David has been unable to travel to the States since COVID set in. So he's joining us uh, through streaming. And um, our sympathy goes out to David from a distance, along with his wife and new little baby, Mark and Stephen. Our sympathy and support and prayers are with you and of course, all of your family. Each of us here today has lost a faithful friend, a diligent Christian co-worker, a mighty warrior for the kingdom of God. But you boys have lost a loving and devoted father, and you young people a loving and devoted grandfather. And uh, so, we're sorry, deeply sorry for your loss. When Chuck realized that his body was losing its final battle to sustain physical life, he made an appointment to meet with me to review his plans for his funeral. And in typical fa Chuck fashion, he was very thorough and very organized. I believe there were three primary objectives that Chuck had for this service. One, he wanted this to be a praise service where God is the primary focus, not Chuck. He told me that African funerals were a time of praise because the individual had been released from this life to something better. And so he wanted this to be like an African funeral. He wanted it to be a time of praise where we're, we're celebrating that Chuck has been released from this life to something far better. He also wanted us to know that out of all of the great and wonderful things in his life, his relationship with God was his most precious treasure. The only change that we made in this service from what Chuck wanted is that we added a eulogy, not to draw attention to what a great guy Chuck was, but rather to draw attention to how gracious God was to redeem and use Chuck in some wonderful ways. He didn't want us to have a eulogy, or he didn't write one in, we'll say that. He didn't plan it into the service, so we planned it in for him. Actually, Chuck wanted me to tell you, and so I will, that he wasn't good enough to get into heaven but neither are you and neither am I. The truth is that none of us are good enough to get into heaven. The only way that we can get into heaven is through the shed blood of Jesus Christ and the forgiveness that we find for our sins in that blood. Chuck wanted this service to be somewhat like being carried to the feet of Jesus like happened to the, the man whose friends carried him to the feet of Jesus that we read about in Luke chapter 5. And so let me read that passage to set the pace for this service. Verses 5 to 18, it says, Just then some men came carrying on a stretcher a man who was paralyzed. They tried to bring him in and set him down before him, Jesus, since they could not find a way to bring him in because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and lowered him on the stretcher through the roof tiles into the middle of the crowd before Jesus. Seeing their faith, he said, 
Friend, your sins are forgiven. Then the scribes and the Pharisees began to think to themselves, Who is this man who speaks blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But perceiving their thoughts, Jesus replied to them, Why are you thinking this in your hearts? Which is easier, to say, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Get up and walk? But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he told the paralyzed man, I tell you, get up, take your stretcher, and go home. Immediately he got up before them, picked up what he had been lying on, and went home, glorifying God. And so in a sense, this is Chuck's opportunity to carry each of us to the feet of Jesus and to present us to his Lord and Savior, asking for the forgiveness of sins. And then thirdly, Chuck wants us to know that God would love to have an intimate relationship with each and every one of us and that he has graciously provided all that's needed for that through his son, Jesus Christ, but we must surrender. He told me that there would be two types of people here today. So you tell me whether he was right. He said that there will be those who need to know Jesus, and there would be those who need to know Jesus better. Let's pray. Sovereign God, our Redeemer, sustainer, provider. We come before you with praise and thanksgiving, even in the midst of our grief and loss. Thank you for the privilege of knowing your servant, Chuck. Thank you for molding him into a man of godly character and allowing us to observe his faithful love and service to you and to those around him. Please comfort this family and us friends as we say our final earthly farewell. Help us in our grief not to grieve as those without hope, but rather grieve the temporary separation we'll suffer until the day we can see you face to face and are re reunited with Chuck and with the others who have gone before us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, Chuck's good friend Ron Baker is going to come now, along with Tammy and Jeanette and Trevor, to lead us in singing Amazing Grace. You can find the words printed in the middle of your program. When I was going to Bob Jones University, we used to sing that last phrase, 10 trillion years. You can put any number on that that you want to. Eternity has no end. The, 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 the 10,000, 10 trillion years, it's only just begun. But what a beginning it must be. I can't imagine how overwhelming that has to be. And so, uh, you know, as Chuck is getting to enjoy these, these first days there, what an amazing experience he must be having. Well, I'd like to read a few scriptures that Chuck had picked out for uh, today. Um, Psalm 34, chapter 4. Um, ver Psalm 34, verse 4. It says, I sought the Lord, and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. It was uh, wonderful talking to Chuck all the way up to the, to the day that he moved down to Ohio. Uh, and God had indeed delivered him from all of his fears. He knew where he was going, and he knew that it was going to be a much more pleasant place. If he was concerned about anything, it was that he would bring disrespect upon his Lord and Savior in the final days of his life when he may be more controlled by the drugs than by his own mind. That's a great spirit, isn't it? Psalm 62, verses 1 and 2. Truly, my soul finds rest in God. My salvation comes from him. Truly, he is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will never be shaken. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18 to 25. 
For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, the intelligence of the intelligent I will frustrate. Where is the wise person? Where is the teacher of the law? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not know him, God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God, and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. Ron Baker is going to come again and present a eulogy. As Pastor Bill Zebo mentioned, Chuck said she didn't want a eulogy, so I decided to do a tribute instead. <clears throat> Good morning to you all, and thank you for coming this day to join with the, Dr. Pearson's family in honoring him. How in the world can I even begin to share what Chuck Pearson's life an example have meant to all of us. I feel totally inadequate, but as we used to say in Sierra Leone, and some of you will understand, I'll go try small, small. On April 4th of this year, Chuck was having lunch with us. In our conversation that day, he shared that decades before, he and Ruth chose Philippians 1, 20 and 21 as their life's goal. The Apostle Paul wrote to the Philippians, I eagerly expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed, but will have sufficient courage so that now, as always, Christ will be exalted in my body, whether by life or death. For to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. And by God's grace, I believe Chuck and Ruth were faithful to this goal and victorious. To God be the glory. Jane and I got to know and appreciate Chuck back in 1974. We were first-term missionaries at a mission hospital in southern Sierra Leone. Dr. Pierce and Ruth were medical missionaries in the north at Kamakwe Wesleyan Hospital. Through the years, I became more and more aware of what an outstanding missionary physician Chuck was. I felt like he was a walking medical encyclopedia. And he was always willing to share helpful advice. Let me share my most memorable example of this. Jill Van Dusen was one of our missionary teachers at the local secondary school. One day I received word that Jill was experiencing weakness in her lower extremities. By the next morning, the weakness was worse. I evaluated her, but I wasn't really sure what was going on. We were fortunate to have daily radio contact with other mission stations. I radioed Kamakwe and asked if I could talk to Dr. Pearson. He came on the radio and I explained Jill's situation. I could hear the concern in Chuck's voice as he told me he suspected this could be Guillain-Barre syndrome, which is an ascending paralysis of the spinal cord. As we talked further, I realized this is a very serious problem as paralysis could get to the point where she'd be able to breathe. The consensus was that Jill needed urgent, urgent medevac from Sierra Leone to a country 
that could adequately treat her. Long story short, we drove her the eight hours into Freetown, and another missionary nurse and I accompanied her on the plane from Freetown to Amsterdam. By that time, she was needing assistance breathing, and we had to bag her the, way, the whole way, the whole seven hours to Amsterdam. As soon as she arrived at the hospital, she was intubated. Two days later, she was traked and was on the ventilator for six weeks. But, praise the Lord, she lived, went back to the States for rehab, and eventually returned to Sierra Leone. To God be the glory. Dr. Pearson was highly revered for his outstanding and tireless medical ministry. Even though he wasn't a board-certified surgeon, he was known for his surgical skills and expertise. He and Ruth were loved and respected by their African brothers and sisters, as well as by many expatriates. To God be the glory. After many years of serving in Sierra Leone, the Pearsons returned stateside where Chuck worked with Southwestern Medical Clinic. SWMC is a multi-specialty, missions-minded group of caregivers here in Southwestern Michigan. Chuck continued his faithful and compassionate medical care to many in this area. His life not only impacted his patients, but also his fellow co-workers. In recent emails, three former medical friends responded. Surgeon Dr. Roy Winslow wrote, a gentle soul and smartest of us all. Another tall oak lives on in the southwestern woodland. Administrator Warren White wrote, his kind and gentle spirit and servant's heart will be greatly missed. And Jan Cornforth, a former nurse, former, former nurse and now physician's assistant, added these touching thoughts. Listen to this. I will miss him. He would make a point to stop into the walk-in clinic to say hello. Spent many a time with him working together at Berrien General Hospital emergency room. Always teased him about eating snake and potatoes <laughs> over there in Africa. Truly, she says, truly an influence on me in my before Christ years. He was a kind, loving, patient, and caring physician who I always admired. He showed me a precious glimpse of Christ when I did not know how much I would someday come to cherish a personal relationship with the Christ he also knew. To God be the glory. Dr. Pearson, Chuck, loved his family. He showed the depth of his love for his wife, Ruth, when she was diagnosed with cancer. He gave up his medical practice to serve and care for her during a long and challenging cancer journey. His quiet commitment to her was an inspiration to all of us. He deeply loved and was very proud of his three sons, David, Mark and Stephen, as well as their families. Chuck spoke of them often and was committed to praying fervently for them, their wives, Michelle, Candy, and Seyoung, and to his five beloved grandchildren, Micah, Madeline, Ben, Natalie, and Daniel. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Let me mention here, and I think Bill mentioned this, we really miss his oldest son, David, his wife and baby son here today. They live in South Korea. I'm sure they would love to have been here, but due to extreme strict COVID measures, were unable to be with us. There are so many more things we could say concerning Chuck's life of love and servanthood for his Lord. But Chuck would be upset if we did. <laughs> he always wanted any praise to go to God. In recent years, we've noticed that Chuck, when Chuck prayed, whether a table grace or a longer prayer, he almost always thanked 
Jesus for dying on the cross for his sins. And today, we too give thanks to Jesus, sacrifice on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. And we say with Dr. Pearson, to God be the glory. That was the New World Symphony, otherwise, Chuck said, known as going home, and uh, made him think about going home. So he wanted that included in the, in the service. Well, Chuck didn't want a eulogy, so I'm glad that uh, Ron gave a tribute. But instead, what Chuck did is he wrote a testimony. And so I'd like to read the testimony that Chuck wrote in January of this year. He says, Ruth and I returned to our African missionary hospital in 2005. 10 years of civil war had left it devastated. God was amazing in how he provided for staffing, repairs, and improvements. Jehovah Jireh, indeed. Initially, the patient load was small, and there was plenty of time to read, including seven volumes of Spurgeon's sermons. What a blessing. Unexpectedly, however, I gradually developed pride, self-righteousness, and a critical spirit God was not pleased and kicked me out of missions forever. Ouch. Pastor Wilson Green, speaking in a Berrien Center Bible Church gym service, shared that he felt in God's eyes the greatest sin was pride. Ouch. In what must have been led by the Lord, David Masick chose Nancy Lee DeMoss's book, Choosing Gratitude, for his Saturday men's Bible study group. It gave me a new appreciation of the greatness of God, of his holiness, and of what he has done for me, especially through his son, Jesus Christ. It also greatly increased my awareness of my sinfulness. God could have cast me aside as hopeless, <laughs> but he didn't. He led me to a state of humility where I could confess my sins, repent, and seek him anew. He restored me to a closer fellowship with him than ever before and gave me the peace of God. What a blessing, priceless. This is said not to seek glowing eulogies or the praise of men. I am no saint, just a sinner, saved by God's grace alone, through faith alone, in our Lord Jesus Christ, alone, to the glory of God alone. From spiritual highs to the deepest low, God was with me. Praise God. Christ really is who he says he is, and he wants us to love and obey and seek him. If there is any lasting significance for my life, it doesn't come from anything I said or did. It comes from the fact that God loved me. Even when I failed him, and he again drew me to himself. Praise the Lord. Chuck Pearson. Well, he also wanted me to read the words to the song Rock of Ages. The words are in your program, so feel welcome to, to join there and, and uh, follow along as I read. Rock of Ages, cleft for me. Let me hide myself in thee. Let the water and the blood from thy riven side which flowed be of sin the double cure. Save me from wrath and make me pure. Not the labor of my hands can fulfill the law's demands. Could my zeal no respite know? Could my tears forever flow? All could never sin erase. Thou must save, and save by grace. Nothing in my hands I bring, simply to the cross I cling. Naked come to thee for dress, helpless look to thee for grace. Foul I to the fountain fly, wash me, Savior, or I die. While I draw this fleeting breath, when mine eyes shall close in death, when I soar to worlds unknown, See thee on thy judgment throne, rock of ages, cleft for me. 
Let me hide myself in thee. Well, Chuck left some thoughts that go along with this rock of ages. And I'd like to just read his thoughts as our message for the morning. That along with some scripture passages that he put down to accompany these thoughts. He says, in God's great love for us, God the Father has provided Jesus, our rock and savior, to protect us from the wrath of God in judgment for sin. Exodus 33:22 says, when my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft in the rock and cover you with my hand until I have passed by. And this song, Rock of Ages, starts off, Rock of Ages, cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee. And then it goes on and it talks about how we're insufficient to hide on our own. And then it finishes up with us standing in heaven before the very throne of this judging God. And all we can do is desperately cry out to him to hide us in the cleft of his rock and to hide in him. The double cure written to believers in 1 John 1, 9, which says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. That shows what Jesus alone can do for us. He forgives our sins. Not just that, but he purifies us then from all of the stain that that sin brings upon us, from all unrighteousness. He purifies and cleanses us. That's the double cure. And we can find that double cure only in Jesus himself shows that Jesus alone is sufficient. The song says, my zeal could never sin erase. On different occasions, uh, Chuck referred to Howard McLaughlin's uh, bumper plate on his, I think it's on his van, might be on his, uh, his car, but uh, a bumper plate on one of his vehicles and uh, the, the bumper plate says, good people don't go to heaven. Forgiven sinners do. And as Chuck already said, he wasn't good enough to go to heaven. But in Jesus, having his sins forgiven, he can stand at the, the judgment throne of God. And he can ask for the blood of Jesus to provide that protection as if he is in the cleft of a rock with God's hand covering him. Thou must save. He goes on and says, Chuck goes on and says, Christ alone is the savior that we plead to, to wash me or I die. We have to plead to Jesus. We're insufficient to get proper cleansing any place else. John 14, 6 says, Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith. And this, not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. Nothing in my hands I bring, simply to thy cross I cling. It's all about Jesus and what he did for us on the cross. John 3:16 and 17 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Chuck also left a, a second 
testimony or an update to his testimony in March of this year. He says, as the COVID-19 pandemic rages and could preclude further meaningful communication, here's a summary of my status before God. With the Holy Spirit and Martin Luther as my guides, my doctrine is based on Holy Scripture alone. I am a sinner, saved by God's grace alone, through faith alone, in our Lord Jesus Christ alone, to the glory of God alone. The doxology states, praise God, from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above, ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Chuck says, I am grateful. I am content. I am at peace. Standing in Christ alone. The team's going to come and lead us in a couple of, couple of more songs. Well, Chuck wanted to conclude the service today with an invitation to come forward and surrender your life to Christ. But he felt that might be a little bit awkward. So he chose a slightly less awkward way to conclude, and conclude the service instead. He requests that uh, everyone turn to a neighbor, somebody close to you, and tell them what God has done for you today. I'll give you a few minutes to do that. Turn to your neighbor and tell them what God has done for you today. Chuck was one who always had a testimony on his lips. He was always ready to tell you what God had done for him that day, or what book he had been reading and got what God was teaching him, or where he was having his devotions and how God was speaking to him. So thank you for honoring him by sharing with somebody today next to you. Now take that same testimony out with you and share it with somebody else. And tomorrow, share another. And the day after, share another. Father in heaven, holy, holy, holy is your name, Lord God, almighty. We stand amazed at your assurance that you not only know each and every one of us, but that you love us and that you want to have an intimate relationship with each of us. <laughs> what an amazing gift you have given us. Father, please grant the desire of Chuck's heart and lead each and every one of us here today into a deep and intimate relationship with yourself. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.